In this one, let's take a look at solving a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. So first, let's write the formula down. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and all of that over 2a. So that's one fact. This is the basic formula. Deriving this is a very complicated process. It's best left, obviously, for a separate lesson. We're going to just make use of it. So, take a look. It relies on having your equation expressed in this particular form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So you should have it arranged this way. Because when you look at the formula, you see that it relies on the values of a, b, and c. So you've got to be able to identify the values of a, b, and c easily. So let's take a look at an example. Imagine I give you x squared minus 5x equals negative 4. When I look at step 3, the problem with that equation is it doesn't look like the form at step 2. Step 2 says on the right side, you got to have a 0. The form at 3, that's step 3, that is, doesn't have a 0. So I got to take the 4 to the left. So it looks like this at that step. x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. So I just did plus 4 on both sides this way, okay? I added it. That means they will cancel off. And I added 4 over here. So it looks like this. Now, at the next step, we can identify the values of a, b, and c. In front of x squared, it's 1 positive. So you write a equals 1. The coefficient on x is the value of b. Therefore, b is equal to the negative 5. That last constant, the plus 4, is the value of c. So I put 4 in that position, therefore. At step 6, I plug those values into the formula. So x equals negative. The negative first negative, that is, is from the formula. Look, at step 1, there's a negative in front of the b. So there's a negative from the formula at step 6, but there's also, in this case, a negative from the value of b, which is negative 5. And then you put plus or minus. Under the root symbol, you put b squared, so that's negative 5 squared. Okay, then you put minus 4. Then you put the value of a, the value of a is 1. Then you put the value of c, that's 4 positive, like that. I'm just making basic replacements. In the bottom, I put 2 times the value of a. The value of a is 1. So I've just made basic replacements. Be careful. Notice the division symbol goes all the way from left to right. Don't just write it part way. You're going to make mistakes if you do that. The root symbol is over that entire expression, not just part way. Step 7, x equals here. Now these two negatives back at step 6 with the 5. That negative right there and that negative cancel off, and you end up therefore with positive 5, plus or minus. Then you work out a little bit under the root symbol, so negative 5 squared is 25, and then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16, and then in the bottom you have 2 times 1, which is 2. So it looks like this thus far, okay? Step 7, then you got to work out the root symbol. So step 8 is going to look like x equals 5, plus or minus, and then 25 minus 16. That's the next step here, okay? So that will give you a value of 9 under the root symbol, and then keep the 2 on the bottom that way. Step 9, x equals, take the root of the 9, so 5 plus or minus 3, in other words, over the 2. Step 10, x equals, you have 5 plus 3, which is 8. So I'm going to separate step 9 into two separate answers. First, I'm going to take 5 plus 3 over 2 and work that out. Remember, when you have the plus or minus, that implies there are two separate values of x to be worked out. So I'm focusing on step 10 only on the plus between the 5 and the 3. So 5 and the 3 is 8 over 2, which is then 4. So 4 is a good value here, okay? In other words, that 4 means if you were to plug it into the equation at step 3, and to the original equation at step 3, the left and right sides would be equal. That's what it means to solve the equation. All right, let's take a look at 11 here. x equals. So back at step 9, remember, we had 5 minus 3 over 2. We have to work out that portion of it. So it becomes 5 minus 3 over 2. This is equal to 5 minus 3, which is 2. And 2 over 2 is 1. So that's the other good value right here. Again, what this tells you is that the value from step 11, if you, if you plug that back into the equation of step 3, it would make the left and right sides of the equation of step 3 equal. That's what it means for these values. That's what it means always for any equations. That's it for this one. I'll see you in another one.